In this video, we understand the need for and functions of various system software. So this video will look at types of system software in more detail. For a more generic description of the classification of software, watch our video titled Hardware and Software First. So in this video, we're going to look at the following types of system software. Utility, translators, and libraries. The final category, operating systems, will be given its own dedicated video. So let's start with utility software. Utility software is designed to keep your computer safe, keep it running efficiently, and provide you with useful tools to manage your files and applications. You can kind of think of utility software as like an MOT for your car. There are many different types of utility software. Some of the most common are file repair, backup, compression, defragmentation, anti-malware, and device drivers. So files can become corrupt or damaged for a number of reasons. File repair software attempts to correct these issues and restore the file to its original working state. A file repair facility is often built in to certain applications, as well as being a separate dedicated software tool found in most operating systems. With so much critical data now stored in a digital format, backing up your important files is essential. Backups can be set to be manual, automatic or scheduled. You can perform complete backups or incremental backups. You can back up to different media or even an off-site cloud location. Again, backup software often comes with your operating system, but can also be purchased separately. Compression reduces the size of a file so it takes up less space and downloads faster over the internet. Compressed files must be extracted before they can be read. Depending on the algorithm used, data is either lost, reducing the quality of an image or an audio file, or represented simply in a different way using binary, retaining the original data in a new compressed format. Defragmentation reorganizes files on a hard disk, putting fragments of files and free space back together. This process reduces the movement of the read-write head across the surface of the disk, which speeds up file access. Solid state drives should not be defragmented as they have no moving parts. It's unnecessary, and worse than that, it can actually reduce the drive's lifespan. Anti-malware software helps keep your computer and files safe from many different types of malware, including viruses, trojans, worms, spyware, and more. Virtually all operating systems come with malware protection already built in, configured and turned on by default. As with many other forms of utility software, there are also companies who specialize in dedicated anti-malware programs. A device driver is software that tells the operating system how to communicate with a given device. Your computer must be able to output to a wide range of different devices. A document printed from a word processor should look the same no matter what make or model of printer you send it to. However, the technology behind each printer's hardware could be very, very different. The device driver translates the operating system's instructions to print the document into a series of instructions that a specific piece of hardware will understand. OK, so let's move on from utilities now to translators. As humans, we pick a programming language and we write source code. Source code is descriptive and easy for us to understand, read, maintain, and debug. However, it's no good for machines. They need the source code converted into pure binary so they can understand and execute it. This pure binary form of the source code is often called machine code. The process of converting source code to machine code is known as translation and is performed by translators. 
There are different types of translators and we'll look at those in another video. Finally, let's look at libraries. So libraries, these are ready, compiled and tested programs that can be run when needed. They're typically grouped together into what we call software libraries. Most programming languages have extensive libraries of pre-built functions. For example, the math library in Python provides common solutions to many everyday problems encountered by programmers who are dealing with numbers. Someone programming in Windows can call on what we call dynamic link libraries or DOLs. These libraries contain subroutines written to carry out a common task on the Windows operating system. For example, the save as function where the user needs to save their work as a file. All the programmer needs to do is call the appropriate DOL subroutine with the correct parameters and the save as dialog box will appear. So there are many benefits to using library routines. They're quick and easy to use and hook into your existing code. They're pre-tested, so you can be relatively sure they're already free from errors. They're pre-compiled, so they're typically optimized to run quickly. Of course, there are some downsides. Adding functionality or making specific tweaks to a library routine can be difficult or impossible. Sometimes you're black boxed from the actual implementation of that routine. So you must rely on the developers to continually maintain the library. Finally, let's look at linkers and loaders. This typically happens as part of the translator phase, which is why we didn't put it into its own category at the start of this video. So the linker is responsible for putting the appropriate machine address in all the external call and return instructions so all modules and external library routines are linked together correctly. It also links any separately compiled subroutines into the object code. The linker can use two methods to pull in the library it needs. It can use static linking, where all the required code from the libraries is included directly in the finished machine code. This can of course result in large executable program files. And they can also use what we call dynamic linking, where compiled versions of the required libraries are stored on the host computer. The operating system links the required code from the library as the program is running. While this cuts down on the size of the compiled machine code, if the dynamic library changes, the program may stop because it tries to call a subroutine in the wrong way. The loader is a part of the operating system that loads the executable program file, the machine code, into memory ready to be run. While using dynamic linking, it will also be responsible for loading the required libraries into memory. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How do utilities help to keep your computer safe and in working order? How does source code written by a programmer become binary code that a computer can execute? What's the purpose of a linker and loader? And what are the advantages of function libraries for a programmer? Thank you.